Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Maasai Mara, and this specifically the Mara River. And what we have here is the Dusty Crossing, and at the Dusty Crossing, well, there is a crocodile. And I will show you what the crocodile is waiting to eat. Well, waiting next to. I'll explain what that means just now. Anyway, there is a large crocodile. You can see lurking in the depths. I wouldn't say it's much more than about, ooh, say, 17 or 18 degrees Celsius out there. So pushing around about 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So he's lurking there in the stream, waiting for something to come down. And what, you might ask, is he waiting for? Well, the answer is about to be revealed. These cameras are set, and there will eventually be five of them, at traditional crossing points where the wildebeest and zebra and Thompson's gazelles of the Mara migration come along to cross. And if I move across here like that, you can see that this is a very well-worn path down which many thousands of animals have come over the course of, well, probably about a hundred years or so, I guess. And they'll come down this path and they will cross the river around here. Now, despite, this is despite the fact that they know there are crocodiles around here. Often they can see them. Uh, often they are lurking below the depths. But they are compelled to move across the river onto the greener grasses on the other side. Now, I'm often a bit confused by this because to me it looks like the grasses are just as green on both sides. And so quite why they do that is a little bit of a mystery. We're now moving into some hippopoptomai. A large pod, whoops a daisy, sorry everyone, I'm just getting used to these controls. And there's a very large pod of hippos waiting in the river as well. And they tend to be centered, I mean they're all over the place of course, hippo very territorial creatures. And so each of these, the big bulls of this area will have a little territory on the map. So this is the dusty crossing. Now can we please go across to the cul-de-sac crossing? Ah, there it is. Oh, marvellous, look at that. And I need to now just change my source, and we can see a yellow-billed stork. Obviously, we can see a whole lot of hippos waiting outside as well, but there is a beautiful yellow-billed stork, and of course, in the foreground, ye olde dinosaur of the deep. Isn't that amazing? The stork is looking for fish, of course, this crocodile, not a particularly big one for this area, so it will still happily be eating catfish, no doubt, and any small things that come down to feed. There's another crocodile. You can see just how many there must be in here. Now, they too are very territorial, and the bigger ones, I think, we will find will, will have pride of place, if you like, amongst the crossing points. So this is another traditional crossing point, and like I say, we're going to put them at about five traditional crossing points. And these ones up north here, we're in the northern parts of the triangle now, I think are probably selected largely for the fact that they're quite shallow, which means that animals can move to and fro across them and kick off the ground if they get attacked. Now, Kylie, you want to know if the migration is almost over. Now, it's, we, we need to sort of put to, put to bed a couple of um, Misconceptions, I think, about the V migration as I zoom in on this rather scarred hippo. The thing to realize is that the migration never ends, Kylie. The migration is a continuous movement of animals and it happens throughout the year. And in this particular area, in the Mara Triangle, where we are now, it is most certainly not finished. So the animals have come into the southern parts of the Mara, Masai Mara, so into the southern parts of the Kenyan part of the migration area, and they have yet to come up north here to where these crossings are. Now, last year, we experienced a number of amazing crossings. Uh, we watched many animals, unfortunately, being devoured by crocodiles and some of them drowning, but we have yet to see that in this particular area this year. It should happen in the next few weeks or so. Hopefully there will be a streaming of animals to and fro across the river. And then eventually, when, if, when or if there is rain further to the south of us, say probably around, oh, I don't know, let's say perhaps around the beginning of September, 
you might expect many of the herds to move back towards the south. And one of the other great misconceptions, and one that I have perpetuated myself, is that there is one main herd, because it's quite nice to refer to the main body of the herd, and I quite like that term, you see, so I've used it very often, but it doesn't actually exist. There is no main body of the herd. The herd itself consists of thousands and thousands of little herds, and, and so it doesn't move as one great phalanx as you might expect it to. Now let's move along here and see if we can't see any crocodiles in this particular piece of the water. Ah, oh, and there we have a really sort of nice reflection of the sun there. Chuck, you're saying do crocodiles eat birds? Uh, crocodiles will eat birds. Crocodiles will eat anything, including each other, should the opportunity arise. They are not shy to eat each other, and in fact, if you're a small crocodile, you don't really want to be around big crocodiles, especially if the big crocodiles have got hungry. All right, let's go back to the dusty crossing if we can. There we are. You can see a whole lot of ox pecars sitting on the backs of the animals there. And thank you for your questions. If you're wondering how on earth Chuck is managing to speak to us all the way here in Kenya, well, you can just use the same hashtag, Safari Live, as you have for your questions and comments for Juma. There are some red-billed oxpeckers. We are now zoomed all the way in, and you can see the hippopotami. Not particularly impressed with the weather, and so they've come out of the water to try and warm themselves. There's a bit of a wind blowing as well, and I will tell you that uh, while I am not in fact out at the moment, I'm in the studio, which is slowly taking shape, and we'll show it to you eventually. Uh, Scott Dyson is out in the field. Unfortunately, he's just working on a few audio and technical glitches because we've got some new cameras and new microphones and new vehicles and, well, you know, it's just rather difficult getting it all put together. I've got to tell you, the amount of technical know-how, wizardry, t uh, work, um, rigging, nuts, bolts, wires, joins, tape, uh, many curse words and that sort of thing have gone into creating this little process. Now, Ryan, you're wondering if the crocodiles and hippopotamus are friends with each other in the water. Ryan, they detest each other. The crocodiles, of course, need to be quite careful of the hippopotamus because the hippos will not tolerate their presence, especially around little ones. And the little ones, of course, need to be aware of the very big crocodiles, because a crocodile, as I say, will eat absolutely anything at all. Let me just zoom around or pan around here and see what else we can find up the river. So this is the Mara River. And just to give you a little bit of background to it, if perhaps you're not very familiar with it, it is about 245 miles long. It rises in the Mao Escarpment to the north of the Masai Mara and it terminates some 245 miles later in Lake Victoria, which of course is Africa's biggest lake, and if I'm not mistaken, the world's third largest lake. So it is a really vast, almost inland sea. Um, Mario, you want to know if uh, hippos are the smelliest animals that I, we encounter on safari? Mario, no, they are not the smellest animals that I we encounter on safari. I'd say wild dogs are pretty smelly things. And just, I know that this isn't the best picture in the world. We're just getting used to the camera and trying to make it exposed for the right things. Um, Mario, wild dogs are pretty smelly. Hyenas are pretty smelly. Um, well, you know, I mean, sometimes on a really hot summer's day, I can be a pretty smelly human being. Uh, and so, no, I don't think hippos are that smelly. They can give off a little bit of a pong, if you like, but they're not, they're not particularly smelly at all. A water buck, a lot more strong smelling, not unpleasantly so, but they are a little more strong smelling. Let's just try and lift that picture and show you some rapids there. Is that a crocodile on the bank? No, I think it's probably just a log. And there you can see the rapids. And these, of course, if you're a giant herd of wildebeest, this is not a particularly comfortable place to cross, but because the ground is relatively shallow, what happens is that the hippo can kick off the ground when they're attacked by crocodilians, which is, oh, there's another hippo in the background there. 
Ah, wonderful. Okay, good. We're going to leave you now. We'll come back and check these river crossings uh, periodically during the course of the morning. And with any luck, we'll actually have a wildebeest or two or a zebra or Thompson's gazelle coming down to have a swim. In the meantime, let us head back down to South Africa to a hyena den, which seems to be sadly lacking in residence.